welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Argon 1 V5 M.2 NVMe case for the Raspberry Pi 5. For some time I've been a big fan of this, the Argon Neo 5, which I've considered to be the best case for a Raspberry Pi 5 with an M.2 SSD. But we now have this new, larger, more feature-packed model, so let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Argon 1 V5 M.2 NVMe case, although it's not actually just a case, as it upgrades a Pi 5's capabilities in many ways. In addition to providing passive and active cooling, this particular model adds a slot for one M.2 NVMe SSD. Although, if we turn it over, we also see there is a model available that adds two M.2 NVMe slots. And so, if you want to turn a Pi 5 into a NAS or a small server, you could use that version of the case to equip it with two NVMe SSDs. In addition, the Argon 1 V5 has an internal DAC, or digital to analog converter, which is used to add a 3.5mm jack with audio output and a microphone input. Also added on this case are two extra USB 2 ports, and the case is also fitted with full-size rather than micro HDMI sockets. Finally, the Argon 1 V5 can be fitted with a small OLED screen to display status information, although we won't be adding a screen in this video. If you're wondering what the cost is, I paid £46.20 from Pyroni here in the UK, with the price being $48 in the US and €45.95 in Europe. So, let's bring in Stanley the Knife and open it up. I think we just cut somewhere down here. That looks like it to me. There we are. Very exciting. And um, here we go. Yes. Oh. Very nice. Where do, how do we get in? Oh, it's just on the end. Look, not sealed. We can do this. And uh, yes, this is a this is a very impressive case. It is mainly cast aluminium or aluminium, depending on your point of view. It's got plastic underneath, and uh, it's just a very stylish piece of kit. I think we should compare it with the Argon Neo 5, which I have over here, and in which my Pi 5 currently resides. Hello. And if we put the uh, Argon 1 V5 down next to it, we can see it is a massively larger Raspberry Pi 5 case. Almost three times as long, not quite as deep, as we can see if I just do that and that. Although clearly, if you do want a more traditionally sized Raspberry Pi 5 case, you'll go for something like the Argon Neo 5. This said, over here we get lots of advantages, as I've already outlined. We can see here the full-size HDMI connectors, and around the front, the extra USB ports and the 3.5mm audio jack. And it's also worth pointing out, this case gives access, if I can find it, to the microSD card slot. I think there's a cover for that inside here somewhere. Whereas we don't have access to the microSD card slot on this case because of the way it has to accommodate the wiring for the NVMe SSD. So, I think we should uh, open this up. It's not actually fastened together right now. We can just do that. We can see various parts we need inside. And so what I'm now going to do is to evict my Pi 5 from this case, put it in this one, connect everything up, and check out the performance. Greetings! I've now laid out all the parts that were contained inside the case, and there was also an instruction leaflet in the box that I missed earlier. And what we have here are the daughter board that gives us the full-size HDMI extra USB and the audio DAC. We have some thermal pads for the M.2 SSD and for the Pi, various screws, the cover for the micro SD card slot, some rubber feet, and two PCIe connectors. And I think it's really good we've got two of these PCIe ribbon cable connectors. Only one is needed, but they are quite a fragile component, so it's great two are included. So, the first thing we need to do is to take the daughter board and go across to our Pi, where we can plug in the daughter board nice and gently and carefully. This is a delicate thing. We can damage a lot of connectors if we get this run, but I think that is okay. And we can now add these thermal pads to the relevant places on the Raspberry Pi. 
There we go. And we can now go back to the case where the M.2 adapter board was already in place. It's screwed in. I didn't have to put that into position. And the unit we've just put together will come in like this, flick upside down and drop in something like that. However, before we put that in place, I just want to say a little couple of words about two wires. First of these wires is a black wire, which we can see here, or hopefully you can see it there. And this comes through on the other side from the M.2 adapter board to provide more power to it from the daughter board. It'll plug in down there. But there's also another wire going from this fan, and that's going to plug into the fan connector on the Raspberry Pi 5. And in theory, in the instructions, this wire is supposed to be on the other side as well. It's supposed to go through the same routing mechanism as the black wire, and then somehow come through here and plug into the Raspberry Pi fan connector. But if you do it that way, there's very, very little wire left on the end by the time this has all been routed through. And it's extremely difficult to get it through because the Raspberry Pi connectors clearly go through these holes. So I find that wire gets trapped. It's difficult to put in. So I've got the fan wire on this side. It won't be quite as pretty that way but I'm someone who was always favored functionality and keeping things safe over cable management. So that's why my wire is going to be. So that point noted, let's take the unit with the Pi and the daughter board and put it in place like uh, this. This is exciting, a little bit of pushing down because it's going onto thermal pads, but uh, there I think we are, that's positioned appropriately. And I can now put in some screws there we go, that seems to be working very well. Oh yes, getting very exciting. And what we now need to do is to fit our NVMe SSD. So let's do that. There we go. And there's also a thermal pad to go on the SSD, so I'll fit that too. There we go. Not really sure that's needed given the speed it'll work, work on a Raspberry Pi, but uh, we'll put it in place. And uh, the idea is that that makes contact with a metal plate, which is on the, this side of the case. Talking of which, we can now put this into place. Something uh, like that. And again, put in some screws. That is all very good. And just to maintain the excitement level at 11, we'll also add these uh, sticky feet. Next, we'll turn this back the other way around. Hello, and we now need to fit the two wires I was talking about. This needs to go into the Raspberry Pi fan connector, and this needs to go into the power connector down there. And I think I'll achieve that by the magic of filmmaking. There we are, we've fitted the power connector and the Raspberry Pi fan connector. And as you can see, my routing of cables here doesn't look that bad anyway. I think it's okay. And talking of cables and connectors, it's worth noting that here we do have access to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO connector. You could in theory put a, a hat in here if you really wanted to. We've got access to the uh, MIPI connectors for adding cameras or, or displays. We've got access to the UART connector, the real-time clock battery connector, which is all great. Although to be honest, I don't think this is a case to use when you're making Raspberry Pi projects. This is not a maker case, this is a Raspberry Pi desktop PC case. Oh, and it's also worth noting that over here we've got what's called a Zigbee port. This is, I think, an internal USB port of some kind. And Zigbee modules are for IoT projects, things like that. And uh, I've got no more information on that about what you can put in here in a moment, but it's potentially very exciting indeed. Anyway, talking of excitement, for this thing to work, we need to connect together the PCIe connector on the Raspberry Pi with the one on the M.2 daughter board. So we need to take one of these connectors and put it in like this. And it's important to note that on these connectors, there is copper on one side and uh, not on the other. And it needs to go into the copper is facing away from the outside of the case. And we've already raised up the uh, little uh, retainers on these PCI connectors. So I can now just drop this in hopefully quite easily. Yes, that drops in very easily indeed. That's a good design. So I can now put the uh, retainers into position. A little bit fiddly there, but everything is now properly in place. So we'll put the top on the case. Here it is. And it's worth pointing out it will hold in place with these magnets. That uh, works pretty well, actually. But uh, I'm also going to put in the screws. There we go. And the final thing is if we flick this over like that, we do have the cover of the micro SD card. I'm going to put this in two, which uh, I would note requires a very small screwdriver indeed. And there we are. We have finished 
our Raspberry Pi 5 has now been fitted in this Argon 1 V5 case. Right, I've now got everything connected up and I forgot to point out that if you want to fit an OLED screen, it replaces this plastic logo panel. As some of you may have noticed during construction, the USB-C power connector was at first not properly aligned. And I therefore want to reassure you that everything was pulled straight and came out just fine when the case screws went in. So let's press the power button down here. It will turn green in a second. There we go, not very bright on camera, but there it is. And there's also a blue LED down here to indicate SSD activity. Over on my desktop, for me, everything worked straight out of the box as I already had Raspberry Pi OS on my SSD and set to operate at PCIe Gen 3 speed. I've covered the setup for this in another video, which I'll link in the video description. And if you have a new Pi and SSD with no operating system, everything can be set up using the Pi's network installer, as I've also covered in a recent video, and I'll also link. If we open the terminal, there we go. Let's do an LSPCI to see all of the PCIe devices on the system. And they include here our NVMe SSD, which uh, is good. And if we also do an LSBLK, we can see the block devices, the storage devices on the system, which are only the NVMe SSD from which we're running Raspberry Pi OS. So let's test the speed of our drive with the HD parameters command. There it is in the buffer. Let's uh, run that. Very exciting. What are we going to get? Well, I kind of know what we're going to get because I've run this test already, but uh, let's see the results. There we are, 831 megabytes a second, which is decent on a Raspberry Pi 5 from an NVMe SSD working at Gen 3 speed. If you're wondering about Wi-Fi performance in what is largely a metal case, it does work if with the signal strength reduced. Here, as you may have noticed, we're on a wired network, but I'll just pull out the uh, Ethernet lead. It is now gone. You might have heard it dropping on the floor there. It came out very silently, no click, but there we are, it is definitely out. And uh, there we are, we've now flicked across to using a Wi-Fi connection, which has got a full strength here, although admittedly, my router is only just across the room. But certainly, if you're a long way from your router, you may have issues if not connected via ethernet. Next, I thought we'd talk about temperatures, power use, and fan noise. And in terms of the latter, I've only heard the fan on this system briefly during boot up. After that, it's been completely silent because uh, it doesn't need to come on. We've got so much metal in the case acting as a heatsink. In terms of power use, I've got a power meter connected right now. I can just uh, do that and we can see the power meter. And we're idling along here at about 3.3 to 3.5 watts. It seems to vary something around that. Anyway, let's come back to the desktop so we can do some temperature tests at load. And I've got my standard test script here. This basically runs for 20 minutes, taking a temperature reading every two minutes. And during the two minute periods between readings, it uses suspense to factor prime numbers to uh, max out all of the cores on the Pi. And uh, this therefore gives us results in a terminal like this. So uh, let's run the test. And we're starting at a temperature of about 33.4, as you can see. And now we should be using some more power. So let's go back to the power meter. And oh look, we're now using about 6.5 to 6.7 watts, something like that. Again, it'll vary a little bit, but uh, we've roughly doubled our power use going from uh, idle to low. So let's come back to the Pi, hello, and speed on through the rest of the test. And there we are, our test has completed and we have some very impressive results with after 20 minutes, the temperature remaining below 50 degrees C with our fan having never come on. So let's put these results on the table to compare them with those for the Argon Neo 5, as well as the official Raspberry Pi 5 case with various cooling solutions and the GeekPi heatsink case. And it is immediately very clear that the Argon 1 V5 offers by far the best cooling solution for a Raspberry Pi 5 of any I've yet tested.
Finally, I told you earlier that everything worked for me straight out of the box because I'd already set up my NVMe SSD on the Pi, and that was true. The fan also works fine, just takes care of itself. The Raspberry Pi knows about that. But if you want to use the front USB connectors and front audio, these do need to be enabled in software. And that has now happened. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed a microphone icon on the taskbar because we can now plug in a microphone to the 3.5 millimeter jack. And if we go across to the little speaker here, the audio control and right click, you can see we can now select between USB audio, the 3.5 millimeter jack or HDMI audio. And this is clearly very useful if you want to use the Pi for something like video calling, because it means you can use a headset. To make this work, the manual provides clear instructions and there are two basic options. One is to edit the Pi's config file using a command like this. And if we just scroll down here, this is what I've done. I've added on the end this command. And uh, out of interest, above it are the commands that have been added previously to make the NVMe SSD work at PCIe Gen 3 speed. The second way you can make things work is to install the Argon 1 script. I've yet to do this. I don't like installing scripts unless I really have to, but as it's you, we will do it. And as the manual informs us, we need to enter this command. There we go. And if we just enter, it'll download and execute the file. There we go. And we now need to reboot. And here we are back again. We've now got an Argon configuration icon on the desktop, although we don't need it for setting up the audio. That will have been done automatically. But we'll just run this up to show you what we get. Let's just uh, execute that. And as you can see, this gives us the ability to configure an OLED display, decide what information to display on it if we got an OLED display. And we can also do things like configuring a UPS unit, things like that. Although, personally, I'm going to opt for 5 to uninstall. Always, I think, a good idea. And there we are, it's gone. And I'll continue to enjoy using my Raspberry Pi 5 in the Argon One V5 case. The Argon One V5 transforms a Raspberry Pi 5 into a very nice, silent, energy efficient, ARM based desktop computer. This said, the cost of a Raspberry Pi 5 and this case and an NVMe SSD and a power supply is the same or greater than the cost of some entry-level x86 mini PCs. And that does beg the question, why would you buy this? And I think it's for the same reason that for many years some people purchased Apple computers that were more expensive than their PC counterparts, but which delivered a very satisfying and very high quality computing experience. And it's exactly the same here. This is a very nice computer to have on your desk and to use. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.